since we're out here for NVIDIA's GTC, that's the Woodstock of AI. We need to check in with the man himself, Jensen Wong. He's the co-founder, president, and CEO of NVIDIA, and a true renaissance man. Earlier today, I got a chance to speak with him on a wide-ranging interview. We aired the first part this morning on Squawk of the Street. It's online now, but we had a lot more to cover. So take a look. When I met you, Jensen, you told me, you know what, Jim, you have to have a 20-year vision. I'm thinking about two quarters. What, when we're together 20 years from now, willing, we talk, what will we be talking about? What will I be asking you? What will you be telling me? <laughs> well, well, let's see. We Partly, we could be reminiscing about the past. That's probably what we're going to be doing. We're going to say, hey, wow, in the last 20 years, we have built a whole new industry that every industry is built upon. And that industry, called AI factories, building AI infrastructure, uh, produces intelligence that affects literally every single industry in the world, from retail to transportation to healthcare to sciences. And um, uh, I think we'll be talking about how uh, AI has supercharged every single one of us to be more brilliant, to do things more easily. Uh, I think we're going to be reminiscing about how quaint it was back in the old days when these robots were just being made and they were like, you know, stumbling around. And, and now look at them. Will we be you talking know? about how, how ridiculous it was that we used to load the dishwasher ourselves? Yeah, well, the, the idea of dishwashers probably don't right. even make sense. I so, think you know, when who, you look around, knows? it seems like there's it's a mosaic of things that are going to change our lives. But when we put it all together, uh, the world's going to be a better place. Oh, no question. No question. We'll live longer. Uh, you know, of course, we would do we will do hard labor simply because we enjoy it. Right. I mean, we, you know, we'll go out and, and work in the garden because we enjoy it, not because we have to. And and of course, uh, you know, we'll, we'll have a lot less. Uh, work-related injuries, and uh, we'll be able to do amazing things and, you know, uh, go mine for minerals a lot easier, and uh, we're going to do, we're going to do things a lot more, a lot more uh, smartly and a lot more safely, and, uh, you know, quality of life will be better, and hopefully birth rates will go up again, and, you know, there'll be all, all kinds of those well, wonderful things. We, it would be strange if we looked at a car by then and still see someone behind a wheel. Yeah, you know, it, I think it'd be funny to see a robot actually sitting in the driver's seat <laughs> driving us. Uh, sure, why not? If a car could, could uh, learn how to drive, of course, a robot will also learn how to drive a car. And, and so maybe those uh, old cars would become autonomous with a robot driving it. Perfect. And all the new cars will be fully autonomous. And the idea uh, that this could not be true is fanciful. It is, it's just true. It, it could be true, much true faster than we think. That's right. Yeah, there's no question now that, that we have digital AI, and digital AI, all the AIs that we know about today, is a giant industry. And it is the industry that will un underpin every industry. Now there's a physical AI, an AI that where the software is the same as AI, but it comes out and it integrates with a physical object, self-driving cars, um, uh, autonomous moving robots in warehouses, um, of course, general robotics, uh, like what we announced with Groot N1. Uh, we, we trained and developed an AI for a general robotic system, a human or robot, and we open sourced it. And so now everybody well, can take advantage of and it. And that means the hyperscalers can spend tens of, million, of billions of dollars. One of the things that upsets me, Jensen, is that people keep saying, oh, oh, woe is me, these companies have to spend that much money. I think they should be spending far more money. They want to spend more money, they and they are spending a lot more money. If you compare last year to this year to last year, the amount of capital expense that they're putting into AI infrastructure is much, much higher. The reason for that is because they make more money. The goal of making intelligence, what, who doesn't want to produce intelligence? We all want to produce intelligence. Every company produces intelligence in our own special way, and, and now we have these factories that help you build intelligence and produce intelligence. Every company wants it, and so it's really only a question of how uh, quickly we could uh, get the data centers built and energies provisioned and so on and so forth. Well, I get it. I mean, every, com every company, GM wants it, 
Uh, Cisco wants it. Every car it, company will have a car factory and an AI factory. Right. Every bank will have, of course, their human factories of helping customers, as well as AI factories for assessing risk and, you know, running their AIs. Well, Every company will have multiple factories. AI factory is one of them. Uh, yeah. We have to be able to understand it. That's one of the problems, to understand that this could be happening. But, and, and to not be scared of it. Please assure us that those who are scared of it may not recognize how much better their lives will be. Well, we, I think we all, we all believe that, that um, uh, having better health care, uh, having better drugs, uh, having better education, uh, you know, we, we, all, we all agree that, that that's a fantastic thing. We would all agree that having pe fewer people have accidents and lose their lives in, in traffic accidents would be better. I think we all agree with that. And uh, we all agree that, that when you go to a hospital and the hospital is much more automated and the surgical rooms are safer and does more precision uh, surgical processes and uh, procedures, we all would all agree that that would be better. Even doctors would agree well, that having AIs help them would improve the quality of their jobs. And I want, yeah. I want to share something with you, and I know this is TV, so you're not supposed to be personal, but my wife lost a child to a successful heart transplant that then failed. And I spoke with the doctors, the head of, of, of pediatric cardiology a few weeks ago, and I said, what would AI do? He said, he laughed, and he said, you'll go into a hospital, and there'll be something wrong with the heart, and there'll be a break. There'll just be a big row of hearts, AI hearts, and you'll grab the right one and fit it, and you'll replace that person's heart with a new heart. And that's how people are going to live in a very regular fashion. We'll laugh that we waited for someone else's heart to come in when AI would have the perfect heart. It would be just another autonomous machine. That heart reasonable. would just be another autonomous machine. Is, is the doctor and, reasonable? That's right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Every, everything that moves in the future will be autonomous and we'll have AI in it. Much more with Jensen Wong after this.